Hello students, the next lecture is related to how cell is referred as a basic unit of life or what are the points that have been proposed by various scientists stating that cell is a basic unit of life. Okay. The basis for this one has begin with the points that have been provided by Aristotle who was the first person to propose that the level of complexity that is required to form as a living organism. So he has given certain points that are validated as a basic unit of life which says that cell is a basic unit of the life. All living organisms are composed of fundamental unit called cells. Every organism will be having a fundamental unit which is referred as cells. They are common in structure and development of an organism. So their structures are common and they are developing and their development are common in all the organisms. And the next one, they will be reproducing by two means that is the mitosis and meiosis. Vegetative cells are commonly undertaking a mitosis based division. However, the reproductive cells will be taking up a meiosis based division. This is common in all the living organisms. They all obey the central dogma of life. So, what is the central dogma of life? This is the central dogma of life. That is, every organism will be obeying this central dogma. Central dogma refers to how the information is moving from DNA to RNA and to proteins. Okay. And then the DNA is again forming into DNA through replication. The DNA is moving into RNA or forming into RNA as a transcription process. Sometimes from RNA also DNA could be formed. That is through action of reverse transcriptase enzyme and this process is referred as a reverse transcription process. From RNA, proteins are made with the help of ribosomes by a process called as a translation. So, this kind of various process, molecular process that have been associated with the DNA to protein formation in all organisms are very common. They are only referred by the term central dogma. Cell contents are within a membrane. That is, the whatever that have been present in, inside the cell are bounded by a membrane. That membrane is called as a plasma lemma or plasma membrane or cell membrane. This plasma membrane or cell membrane is in turn made up of lipids and protein. This is universal in our, all organisms from even a bacteria, an archaea or a eukaryotic cell that compose of a plant cell or animal cell. Every cell will be having a delimiting membrane that is referred as a plasma membrane. And the next point, everything that have been existing outside this plasma membrane or biological membranes are referred as a non-living. Which one is a non-living there? Then its exact example is virus. Virus is the one which is commonly referred as a acellular entity. You look at the definition for virus. Virus is an infective agent that typically consists of nucleic acid molecule which is surrounded by a protein coat. It is too small to be seen through light microscope. They can able to multiply only within the living cells of a host. That is they will be using the host machinery for their multiplication and survival. That is the reason they are called as a acellular particles. Another definition even says that virus are not living things. Virus can able to multiply only by using the host machinery. Now we will look at into some of the proofs given by scientists which say that cell is a basic unit of life. The first and foremost proof was the findings of Shielden and Swan which states that any kind of a cell type will be having a common unit structure and development. That is structure and development of cell is common even if it is of a plant cell or an animal cell. In fact, this finding only later led to the development of the cell theory. The next important finding that has in turn shaped the point that cell is a basic unit of life was by 
bichet bichet is a person who propose organ or compose of different tissues tissues were in turn made up of fundamental unit called cells so the entire organism at a one point will be formed only of the cells so this thing can be very simply explained here in this image you will just look at into this image say this is a molecule that forms into a macro molecule okay say water is a molecule hydrogen and atoms oxygen or atoms they are joining together forming into a water molecule so this water molecule in turn form into a higher level of macro molecules by interacting with the other molecules say for examples atoms join to form molecules macro molecules are larger molecules that will be formed from the elements or atoms say for example dna rna lipids they are all the different kinds of a macro molecule so these macro molecules are further forming into organelle and organelle are forming further there into cell structure that is various organelle are getting united to form the cell structure so from a chemical level it has been now to move on into a cellular level that is atoms and molecules form organelles organelles were in turn composed of nucleus mitochondria golgi body endoplasmic reticulum they are all forming into a cell everything present together will be going into a cell cells are united together which form into a higher order structure which is referred as a tissue say for example bone bone are made up of different cells bone tissue is the one which is made up of different cells these bone tissues are also again associating with one another to form into an organ okay it forms into a organ system later you can able to look at a complete organ system formation with the bones so bones are the one which in turn makes about the skeletal system of any kind of a living organism skeleton refers to the bones present in an organism so from cells it is formed into a tissue from tissues it forms into a organ and from organ it forms into an organ system that whole organ system is now referred as a skeletal system skeletal systems are in turn important one of the organ systems there in an organism okay so this is a way in which how the molecules are interacting from a very smaller level and they form into a complete organism at a higher level that is from a lower order how it forms into a complete organism at a higher order this is a point that has been proposed there by xavier bichet organs are composed of different tissues and several organs are grouped together to form into a organ systems of an organism here the organ system in the example is actually the skeletal system